So I was tasked slash asked on BGG and on um, the Kickstarter to uh, play the Bandit Ambush Skirmish um, with a very specific setup because a person was having trouble with it and we know what's successful and what's not. There's certain skirmishes if you get into. Uh, you can't win if you don't have the right uh, selection of people or the right amount of people, the right amount of renown, the right amount of willpower. Uh, but, um, so let's talk about it a little bit. Uh, I was asked to do the bandit ambush specifically. Um, this is the setup. Let's talk about it. We have a thrasher, two backbiters, and a bowmaster. Uh, the power of uh, the thrasher is adjacent bandits get the shield token as long as that token is in place. So he's also the only silver one on the board uh, for the bad guys. Uh, so he's going to be clearly the guy we have to take out first. Uh, the setup. So they're set up there, as you saw on the board. And we can set up in the uh, spaces. Uh, the uh, scenario as given to me by the, or the skirmish as given to me by the person who asked for um, the video was uh, four bannermen, one renown each. They also have their one willpower and then one uh, follower, eagle eye. It was not told to me who the eagle eye belonged to, so I'm just going to give it to um, the war master. Um, everyone's silver except for the thing, and then I have set up the eagle eye there. I have my renown and my willpower. Uh, one group willpower. The war master could spend renown for extra group willpower, but he's going to need it, I think, to have um, the eagle eye sacrifice for him. Uh, where does the one group willpower come from? It comes from if you are bronze rank. You gain one group willpower. I was not given any information about this, so perhaps we would have two group willpower, but I'm just going to assume we have one group willpower. There it is. So, uh, Bandit Ambush. The I'm going to use the quick reference in the skirmish. For War Master, then Thane, then Keeper of Names, uh, then uh, Quarter Master. So I have it set up like this. And so it's going to be here, 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 here. So let's go ahead and do some combat. Colby has two move and a range of two, which means technically I could hit him right now. But I'm going to direct all my forces to one side because I don't want to be caught in range of both of these. So all my forces are going to come over here and try to destroy this group. And then once this is destroyed, I can attack this group. And if I've done it right, I shouldn't take any casualties or very few casualties. So I'm going to go one... I'm going to go two. Uh, I'm going two because I want to make room for people and I just want to make sure that he's not in the way. These big Varl and the Dredge, they can get in the way. And that can be to your advantage if this was a four person base here. He could block it from attacking anywhere else. But he's also going to spend his, his uh, willpower to increase his rank to gold temporarily. As a gold rank, when he attacks this thrasher he will remove the shield and the silver per the rules you'll find this on page 13 under banner ranks there's a bulleted list the bottom one is gold rank it says any token at gold rank banner must be reduced to silver banner rank when struck once in combat and in addition if a token is at this rank and attacks a token with a shield token it removes the shield token and reduces the banner rank by the target by one so that's why I both removed the shield and the banner. Next we're going to go to the Thane, but the Thane is the bronze here. He's not uh, a silver, so we need to reserve him. Uh, he can die with one, one attack, so we're going to move him into a position, uh, but not necessarily to attack. So I'm going to maybe, I'm just going to move here and be done with it. Well out of range, because we're going to go to Fisk. Who moves to? One. Two. Mm, two. And he's going to, with his range of two, 
attack and destroy the Thrasher. When the Thrasher gets destroyed, these guys no longer have shields. And he will gain a renown. Now, this is important because the aspect of the game when the bandits or when the when the when the bad guys in this case go, they're going to attack the peop the bannermen with the most renown. So I need to look at my renown and measure who gets renown to make sure they're attacking who I want them to attack. And at this point, they would be attacking Fisk, which I like because he's a silver and a shield. So Astrid's gonna go. She has a range of four and can move three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Sounds good to me. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Shot, dead, renown. Right? So that's all the bannermen. And now we go to the eagle eye. And the eagle eye is going to have three movement. One, two, three. Has a range of three. One, two, three. Attack, kill, renown. Four. The, uh, the War Master. So that's my entire turn, and I've kind of did a pretty good job of taking care of these guys. Um, so now it's going to be the Bandit's turn. Alright, so they are going to activate in order of the card. So Backbiters, Bowmasters, then Thrashers. That's, that's how the cards work. That's what it means when it says from top to bottom. And then enemies do not leave combat when engaged with the bannerman and always perform their special abilities. This person's special ability, the backbiter, this attack hits all adjacent warband tokens. This token moves to be adjacent to as many warband tokens as possible while attacking its priority target. Well, you can't leave combat with the war master, and these are two bannermen, so he's going to slide over here and he's going to attack both of them. He's no longer gold, I'm sorry, he's silver. Uh, so the silver banner is removed and the shield is removed. And that's his entire action. Backbiter first. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Why that direction? Well, because these two bannermen and this bannerman, these three have the most um, renown. So that's who they're going to go for. Um, next is the bowmaster. One, two, three. She has a range of four, one, two, three, four. She can hit the bannerman. He has the same renown. So he's gonna go ahead and attack the one she, she's gonna go ahead and attack the one she can kill. She's gonna attack, and she would kill him, but he's gonna spend one of his renown to have his follower die in his place. He only can do that because his follower is adjacent to him. That's why it's good if you have followers to have renown in combat. At this point, the follower's dead, the follower's done his job, and the bannerman's still around, which is important for most missions. And then last but not least, uh, the thrasher comes up one, two, three. The Bowman is no longer adjacent to the Thrasher, so the Thrasher's shield goes away, but these two guys still have shields. So I still have to deal with the Thrasher first, but now it is my turn again. So, Colby first. You're thinking, okay, well, what are you going to do? I'm going to go away from these guys. I don't want to be in range of them. I think I can probably defeat them all this round. I'm not sure, but even still, I don't want to leave... You have to really look at the board. It's a puzzle, and there's a solution that is the best choice, the best solution for that particular... I can, I can see already that if I can defeat him, these guys have no shields. So my goal is to defeat these guys and these guys. He can't help with that, so he's going to move away. There's nothing he can do. Why move up there? He can't do anything to those shield guys besides... And he needs a round anyway, so I'm going to come... Here, here, defeat, get in renown. The Bannerman. I'm pretty sure um, because he's lower on renown, I can do something with him. Uh, he's going to use his willpower to move twice. He has a movement of three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm going to come up here and attack, defeat this person, which is important, and gain a renown. Now, if it stayed like this, he would be dead. But it's not going to stay like this because these two people are going to get some renown and do some killing. Um, so, um, 
we'll see what's going to happen. One of those two people will have extra renown. So the Bannerman Fisk is first. He's going to go one, two. He puts him in combat, so he's not going to move away from him. And he's going to attack him with his range of two. He's going to spend his willpower to become a gold rank temporarily and remove the silver and the shield. Now if I can just kill him, these two shields go away. All right, perfect. Which means I need Astrid to kill this guy. She has a range of four. I'm going to come around this side, I think. Um, although I guess I don't have to, do I? Yeah, I might as well go that way. She has a movement of three. One, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and spend her willpower so I can get in the perfect position. One, two, three, four, five. She's going to fire at the Thrasher, defeating him, giving her three renown. Now what does this do? That means this person will not, by the way, they lose their shields, so which is what I wanted. This person will not leave this combat, so he's going to attack a person with silver, take away the silver, then he's going to be dead. This person's going to attack the Bannerman in range with the highest renown and meeting with the most targets. In this case, if I would have moved her close to this Bannerman, the guy would have come up and attacked both of us. But if I move over here, he's going to move over and attack her. So. Let's go ahead and move over, attack her, she loses her shield, he attacks him, loses the shield. You can see what's going to happen already. Um, at this point I have to decide who gets renown. Colby has two renown, but he's going to get two from the combat after we win, so I don't think I need to give him any more kills. What I would like to do by the way, I didn't say this, but when, he, when, the, when the Thane got his first kill here, he would have put something on Deeds of Valor, right? Because he defeated an enemy. And so if I can get him to defeat another enemy, that puts him really close to that kind of free, free stuff that he gets. So I probably want him to kill one of them, and I think I want the Quartermaster to kill one of them. So Colby is just going to do nothing. Going to move down to the Bannerman for the thing and it's one two three works for me attacks kills renown would got a deed of valor leaving fisk to kill this guy to gain renown so all the people are dead i lost one follower i started with one renown on each of them and after i reward for the combat um, the skirmish victory, that's what it looks like. I mean, all my people have three renown, and Colby has four, and I only lost a single follower. And once again, that's what followers are for. They're, they're, they're the ones that keep your bannermen alive. Uh, that's it.